Good day, viewers. Welcome to Wanga Fat Wednesday, the time where I tell you who am I not giving a fuck about today. Now, I often ask for input in putting together Wanga Fat via Twitter, Facebook. I ask people if they have any suggestions. Far and away, the most common suggestion is the British royal family. Everyone with a brain is over them, and everyone is frustrated by the tabloid media, and hell, even the supposed serious media, just doing story after story after story over these really just unimportant people. Like, particularly in the lead up to the recent royal wedding, Wills and Kate, everyone was saying, oh god, do Wanga Fat on the royal wedding. Apparently missing the fact, I did Wanga Fat on the royal wedding in November last year. I was over the royal wedding before it was cool to be over the royal wedding. Hashtag hipster wanga fat. So while I seriously don't give a fuck about the royal family and the media coverage of them, really there would have to be a new angle for me to go back to them. Like the media would have to do something even more stupid and more pointless than what they've done up to this point. Which is surely impossible. Isn't it? Well, not if you're Newsweek magazine, because you see, Newsweek chose to do a story about a particular royal this week, uh, but it was a royal who doesn't even, like, exist anymore. It was about Princess Di, who, if she wasn't dead, would be 50 this year. But she is dead, so it's hardly fucking relevant that she would have been 50. It's absolutely meaningless. And they mocked up a cover. They've like photoshopped the picture of Di to, you know, age her, give her a few wrinkles and then put her into modern clothes. And they've put her next to young Kate, who would be her daughter-in-law. You know, if she wasn't dead and everything, which means she's never met Kate. And so some people have said, oh, look at that picture. It's sick. It's ghoulish. It's crass. It's exploitative. It's just fucking stupid. It looks... Of all the stories happening in the world, of every important event that could be reported on, I mean, hell, even of the unimportant things that could be reported on, Newsweek didn't use any of them. They fucking made something up that isn't real, that isn't relevant to anyone who has anything remotely approaching a fucking brain. I would not have thought it was possible for a media outlet to do something even more inane about the royals than they've already done. But Newsweek, you go, you've lowered the bar. I mean, my God, how low can they sing? It's things like this that make me think that we actually deserve these non-existent apocalypses. That moron in America who keeps shifting the date when he gets it wrong. You know, the bullshit about 2012 and the Mayans. We probably deserve it after things like this happen. Hell, if there was any justice, when the zombie apocalypse comes, a uh, zombie die would rise up out of the grave and go up and down Fleet Street where the tabloids are in England just tearing the faces off these hacks who won't let her corpse rest. They won't let her corpse rest in the ground, so her corpse should rise up and tear them to pieces. And I know, traditionally, zombies go after brains, but she's not going to have much luck looking for brains among the Fleet Street hack. So she might as well, you know, just make it worth all our while. If we're going to die in a zombie apocalypse, at least have a little poetic justice where zombie die gets to rip the tabloids into tiny little bleeding shreds. Oh, and if you're the type of person who's now prone to go, oh, you shouldn't say bad things about Di. She was special. She was the people's princess. She was a saint. I really don't give a fuck.